In today's video, I'm going to be setting up and giving my first thoughts on the GTEC A30T, a three extruder color mixer 3D printer. Let's get started. GTEC recently reached out to me and said, would you be interested in having a look at any of our machines? And this one, a color mixer printer, is something I've never had the chance to play with, and so something I thought would be quite an interesting video. As you can see, I've already whipped it out of the box, and I'm in the process of getting it set up, which I will continue to do now. This printer arrives as a semi-assembled 3D printer, which means you are required to do a little bit of setup, but that helps keep the shipping costs down and is fairly common practice on these cheaper printers. The XZ gantry comes separate from the moving base, and I'm just in the process of screwing that down. We have then got these three extruded drive gear setups, which look to be similar to the 3D Titans. It will be a pretty quick installation, I expect, and then we can get this printer on and try out a first print. Right, so we're mostly set up now. It's taken me about an hour, to be honest, just because of the T-nuts and things have been a bit fiddly, but we've got the three extruder drive gears mounted up the top here. They've each got their own filament runout sensor. The filament sits up the top here, the three different rolls, and these little pieces are detachable so you can get the, uh, the filament in and out. All the cables are connected up and plugged in. There is some thought for strain relief, which is always good to see. I've cable tied the hot ends main uh, data cable at the top here just to keep it out of the way of the print. I'm just going to whip on now the GTEC build surface onto the aluminium bed and then we'll be ready to stick on a print. Right, so that's now the GTEC A30T set up and turned on. I'll stick a print on. Right, so while that's warming up, let's have a little deep dive onto what this printer features. As I briefly mentioned earlier, it's got three different extruder drive gears. They're all E3D Titan clones. It will be interesting to see how well they perform, as obviously the E3D Titan is known to suffer with filament grinding, and some of the clones can be particularly bad for this. So it will be interesting to see how they get on. We've got here a radial cooling fan, and the flow of air is directed by a 3D printed fan duct. It's got manual bed leveling, there's no touch probe, it's a single limit switch at the one side, so you're going to need to brush up on your manual bed leveling if you use this printer. Luckily I have a video for that here. Uh, we've got uh, quite a nice looking touchscreen down here and good functionality that I've seen so far. We've got the ability to control the extrusion of each of the extruded drive gears as you would have expect all from the touchscreen. It's a standard bed slinger design, so you won't be throwing out any massive speeds, but that isn't an issue as such. Why do I think someone would opt for this sort of a color mixer printer over the other options you might consider? For example, the Palette or Bamboo Labs AMS. When you've got three strands into one output like this, color switching is quite simple. You just retract and then put the other color in. You've also got the option for a hot end like this to actually mix the color. So if you were to use cyan, magenta and yellow, then you have the option to uh, mix colors and potentially achieve quite a wide range, which is what I'm excited about. And also doing so with far lower wastage rather than having to have these massive purge towers. Hopefully. That's what we see in the next video. Anyway, I'll get this print on now as we are now hot, and here we go. So this is just a standard G-code that came with the card. It's some sort of colored cube. One of the things I am a little bit concerned about is uh, this build surface. Personally, I would always opt for glass um, because it has better temperature stability than the aluminium. The reason this printer has pulled me back out of my YouTube slumber is because I am really interested in the culling mixing and how that's going to be. I keep seeing on Instagram these, these massive purge blocks and waste towers, and I am interested to see whether using a color mixer it's possible to achieve some less wasteful results. The finished cube has more color separation than expected. We've got blue on the right hand side, through a more skin tone in the middle, and red to the left hand side. If there's anything in particular you'd like me to print, anything you'd like me to try with this printer, with the color mixing, then let me know in the comments down below and I'll see if I can get that into the next video. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and I'd really appreciate a subscribe. I know I haven't been as active recently, but trust me, there's gonna be some good content coming. I have been moving to a new premises for 3D Tomorrow Filament and it's needed quite a lot of building work, which I've been throwing my hand at. Uh, so that's where my, most of my attention has been of late. The good thing is that when it's all done, there will be not just a purpose built space for the 3D printer filament and the 3D printing, but also I will be making considerations for where I can do filming and I'll hopefully be showing some more scenes of actual filament extrusion and that will be a big focus on the channel. Obviously I'm very well aware that there has been a massive push to short form content across most of the platforms, YouTube included, with YouTube Shorts. So because of this, I'm going to also be making my videos slightly shorter and try and give you the information you want quicker. And hopefully that will be rewarded and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that new style uh, in the comments down below. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.